Don't let it go to voicemail. Pick it up. It's the black <laughs> phone. Right? They got stuff to tell you on that That's phone. It's important. Right. It's, 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 it, they're not calling about your car warranty. Uh, <laughs> I made you some breakfast. What'd you put in that? Salt and pepper. <laughs> this is the latest film from Scott Derrickson, who, of course, did the first Doctor Strange movie, but came from horror before that. So he's kind of digging back into his roots with his favorite leading man, Ethan Hawke. Uh, although Ethan Hawke's not the leading man this time. He is the villain, a, a child snatcher in uh, a Denver neighborhood in the late 70s known as The Grabber. Um, our hero is a kid named Finney, played by Mason Thames, and his sister Gwen, uh, the really great Madeline McGraw, mm -hmm. Um, this is based on a Joe Hill story, but you would be forgiven for thinking you were watching an adaptation of a story by Stephen King, who is Joe Hill's dad. Um, this oh. has, a, yes, ah, okay. this has, this has a lot of Stephen <laughs> King tropes in it. Yeah. The alcoholic dad, the racist bullies, the, uh, girl with visions. Um, and so basically, uh, yeah, the, the grabber is going around and, and, you know, snatching kids in this neighborhood and um, Finney and Gwen are aware of this and Gwen is actually seeing details in her dreams that the police are like how did you know about that we haven't told anybody um, and of course eventually Finney himself becomes a victim and he is put in a room uh, with a mattress and a black phone. And if that phone is disconnected, it doesn't work, according to the grabber, but it keeps ringing and he keeps getting messages. And those messages might help him survive this trauma. Um, yeah, this is a, a very stripped down, cool, creepy movie. It requires certain leaps of faith and logic, even beyond just the black phone part. Mm. But um, the Kid performances are really good. Ethan Hawke is genuinely creepy, although his mask is a little ridiculous, but <laughs> it's also a little off-putting. Um, and, you know, it, 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 at times it reminded me of Fresh, just the whole, like, oh. you're trapped in a room, how are you going to get out of that room yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Um, there are a few jump scares that are a little, a little on the nose, but nevertheless effective. Um, but yeah, it's, it, 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 it is creepy. You're not really quite sure how it's going to come out. And um, the period detail, they, mm -hmm. they get really well. And of course, the drunk dad is Jeremy Davis, because who else? <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I dug it. Uh, what'd you think? I did too. You know, it's funny. You and I were talking earlier this week with our new friend, Chris Crawford, on his Circling the Bases podcast yes. about the bad news bears. Oh, right. Yes. <laughs> this feels like a horror movie version of the Bad News Bears, right? Because it's, it's a movie that is set in 1978 that yes. also feels like it was made in 1978. Because there's, that, yeah. there is just a, a, a raw realism to the abuse, the neglect, the alcoholism, the way these kids are forced to fend for themselves, the way yeah. they curse, the way they talk to each other, the way they are more self-sufficient and like not hovered over the way kids are today. You know, they're just like, oh, I'm gonna go spend that at my friend's house. Or like, I'm just gonna go ride my bike somewhere. And like, right. as long as you were back by the time the streetlights came on, nobody cared. Like, this is that, this is that kind of vibe. And it feels extremely authentic in that regard. Also just, this very nondescript working class Denver neighborhood um, gives it the sense that this could be anywhere. Yeah. Right. There's there's nothing like peculiarly magical. Not a big about this gothic place. house, you know. Yeah. The... This could be any neighborhood in any town in any state in America, and it happens to be in Denver. Um, both of the kids are great. The fact that these are not super famous kids also adds to the authenticity of it mm -hmm. because they they feel like real kids and they talk to each other the way that tweens do, like when you curse too much because you're trying to act more mature than you actually are, you know, yeah. like gratuitously. Um, the, the fights, the fact that like people beat the shit out of each other, mm -hmm. Which doesn't really fly today. <laughs> Not so much, but and it yeah, shouldn't. And it shouldn't. But sure. it was a thing that you know you it had happened. to do to yes. to defend yourself and prove yourself. Ethan Hawke is very scary. I'm trying to think: has he played a real villain like this before? I mean, he's 
played some darker characters and stuff I like haven't first seen, performed for example i know? haven't seen all of his other films with derrickson i know what's the the in not insidious but the other sinister, sinister. i haven't seen that one but, but he's not the villain right he's the protagonist he's not the villain he's not the villain in the purge right he's, is he i mean eh. He's shitty in The Purge, yeah. but he's less shitty than the people who are trying to kill him, maybe. He's not kidnapping children in The Purge. <laughs> By degrees, you know. Um, so I thought he was really good in this, and uh, I thought his mask was very creepy. There are various forms of that mask. Yes. There you were know? times where I thought I thought it was kind of ridiculous, and then other times where it was genuinely like, you know, so yeah, no, it 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 does, it gets the job done some I'll, very cool right. camera work the way they use the phone is constantly inspired mm. yes you have to go with that conceit yeah, but no, i and, think and, they, and that yeah. part was that was the least of it like uh, this is obviously gonna have some, some supernatural elements so the phone part was fine there's other plot things that happen later where i'm like mm, okay movie I'm okay sure, we'll do that but the fact that they established that this is a world in which like supernatural visions and connections can exist yes. i think sets the the template for this and also they establish really efficiently how this kid is as resourceful as he is really yes. really quickly like like the first scene takes place at a baseball game where he's the pitcher and mm -hmm. so his ability there is going to be crucial he right. is playing with rockets so his mechanical engineering ability is going to be crucial and they do that really quickly they sort of like drop these little breadcrumbs here's yeah. who this kid is so that when he is able to fend for himself in that room and is it able to scans. come up with ideas and it makes sense even though he's he's kind of a little kid he's kind of a, a skinny little kid for his age he's 13 years old yeah. but the fact that he can be he's so resourceful. resourceful exactly the word i was going to use it, it makes absolute sense so that was clever from a storytelling perspective yeah. which is also a stephen king thing it's like the the kids who come from the shitty families or the 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 households where they aren't safe and having to fend for themselves are able to you know protect themselves from whatever the big bad is later you know so mm -hmm. uh yeah no that all it, it, you're right it's set up well it's it, it's not heavy-handed in any way and it does pay off plot wise <laughs> i'm saying eight i dug this i said seven i had a good time this is not my genre per se but i thought it was well done